Thank you, everybody, for coming. We really appreciate you coming in, taking a listen to what we have to say. My name is Mark Thompson. I'm Scott Truzzo. And we are here to talk about the integration of Alteryx and Tableau. Brief discussion on the agenda. We're going to talk about why we're here. We'll give it a, a brief introduction of both Scott and I, the general, talk a little bit about Alteryx itself. We're going to talk about how the general came to be using Alteryx, as well as Tableau, and that history, some of our success that we've had with it, and then we'll get into the business case, which I assume is the major reason why most of you are here, and we will talk about kind of what our prior state was, our legacy, the problems we wanted to solve as we went forward, and then our solution to that. And then at the end, I'm going to open, I'll uh, swing back around and do some nuggets, as well as don't cut out early because I'm going to give you a really nice little concrete here, technical, and then at the end we'll move on to questions. Why are we here? We're here looking for a mythical creature, the thing that everybody tries to do and very few companies have had success. Everybody looks at the forecast and they go, yeah, we're going to get a rolling forecast, and then they struggle, and then they go back to old methods. Why we are not here, we are not a hands-on session today. We are not going to be pulling out tools and talking about connections, except for that little nugget at the end. But we're not going to be talking about how you use Tableau or how you use Alteryx or how you do this. It is more conceptual, how we put the forecast together, how we made it work, how we made it successful. If you want a hands-on session, I believe Alteryx has a hand-on session, uh, and you can check your schedule and go to that. And of course, you can always go over to the vendor hall and talk to these fine people. They are more than happy to help you. So who am I? My name is Mark Thompson. I'm the Director of Data Services at The General. I have a Master's in International Finance with a uh, International Business with a focus in finance and IT. I have kind of, if you look down at that little triangle, that's how I describe myself. As I sit in operations, and I've always been the guy who acted as the liaison between operations and IT and finance. I was sitting in operations speaking the language of the others. And taking data and spinning it into information. I was a spreadsheet Excel super user, and now I am, quite frankly, an unabashed, unashamed, Alteryx and Tableau super fan. And I'm Scott Truzzo. I'm the assistant accounting manager at the General. Uh, my, a little bit of that, my background, I'm bachelor's in, uh, bachelor's in accounting with a minor in finance, working on my master's in accounting again. My IT background is I had one computer science class at Clemson, so uh, only covered Excel or something like that. Uh, at the General, I, besides journal entries, reconciliations, I've been working towards integrating more efficient process, process, process workflows uh, and integrating Alteryx and Tableau into our reporting and everything like, like that. So our company, who we are, we are, we are the general insurance. Uh, some of you might recognize this guy uh, in commercials with, with Shaq nowadays. Uh, we've been providing a personal auto insurance for over five decades. We became an affiliate of American Family about five years ago and since then we've been growing tremendously. Um, when I started a little over four years ago, we were about less than 800 employees and riding less than 30 states, about 25 or so. But we've, we've experienced tremendous growth. And with that growth, we've really needed to improve and make enhancements to our analytics. And then that's where... Yeah, and exactly what Scott said. We've had this growth over the last five years. And scale is a huge thing. Our company, when I came there five years ago, we had less than 20 states. I think it was about 17 or 18 when I joined the general, and we're now at 47 plus, right? So that brings us to how we ended up here. But before I do that, I've got a question for you, and I'd like everybody to please participate real briefly. Who, all, by a show of hands, who already has Alteryx? Holy smoke, Seth, would you look at that? <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, how many of you are like actively considering it and looking at it going, yeah, this might do what we want? Okay, there's a portion of you. How many of you out there are going, what's Alteryx? <laughs> there's a couple of hands, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
So those people at the end there are like, what's Alteryx? Definitely go down to the, the data village, I think they call it, the vendor hall. Go talk to the, to the people at Alteryx. A bit about Alteryx and a bit about data. You guys are all data people, otherwise you wouldn't be here at Tableau. 37% of the time, people are out there searching, looking, where is my data? How do I find my data? 60% of the time, you've got multiple inputs, sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes a few dozen, as we'll talk about a little bit later. And they might be everything from spreadsheets to SQL to DB2 to JSON to, to Hadoop, who knows? Huge amount of money with taking models, creating models, <laughs> repeating models, doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And then in terms of data science, you get and develop models, and 87% of the times those models never even get deployed. And Alteryx is great for talking about and making that happen. It is a great tool for discovery, prep and analyze and model your data, and we'll talk a little bit about these things as we go, because these actually come into play with our case study, as well as you can share it. You put it out on the server, you create apps, you can get it out into your organization and democratize it, just like we were talking about in the hall at the keynote a little while ago, and you can help deploy and manage and get that out there. Repeatable workflows. An enormous number of, it, we used to do the same thing, and I'll get into this a little bit, but you can create process flows, schedule them, send them hands off, right? Code free, and we'll definitely hit on this point as we talk about it, because we haven't had it that long, and we are creating all of this stuff that you're going to hear us talk about today. Flexible, diverse, as I said, you can connect it to different things, you can send it back out to different things. You can do anything you want with your data. I'll be honest, I haven't found anything yet that Alteryx can't do with my data. I haven't found it. I, you know, it's, almost a, it's almost gotten to be a challenge where, hey, can we figure out something that this thing can't do? Oh, you know, try and break it, right? Haven't found it. Get it deployed out there. Get it in the hands of your users. Can't emphasize this point enough. Cannot. We get up and running, and a person can get up and running. They don't have to read three books, you know, this thick, and take classes for a year and a half before they create their first program that does something. You put it on your desk, and you know what? You're working. I've seen it. I've seen it. And you can scale it. That's one of the big reasons we brought it in, is because the way we were doing it wasn't going to manage, wasn't going to work. So how did we get here? <laughs> I like to call, I, I, I use the, the metaphor, if you will, of a blind date. Two years ago, I went to Austin. And what we were doing in the end of 16 is the senior management, dashboards, dashboards, dashboards. Everybody wanted dashboards. And just like a lot of the companies that you're at, I'm sure the management is doing the same thing. You're at Tableau, you know about dashboards. Well, as the final process, you know, we looked at the, as I, as I went through it, I looked at all of the usual suspects. I don't need to go through the names, you know them. And we ultimately settled on Tableau. We ultimately settled on Tableau, and I thought I had, that was it. So I came to Austin. We hadn't even signed a contract with Tableau yet. And talked to every company that I could possibly talk to about what do you think of this Tableau thing? What do you think of this Tableau thing? And everybody had more or less the same story, which was, it is the greatest thing ever. It will butter and toast your bread for you in the morning. But if your data is not clean, your implementation may struggle and you'll have troubles. And then they would laugh and go, yeah, and whose data is clean? <laughs> You've got to tell, I know all of you. That's one of the major points that we're talking about, right? And right after that, the next phrase was, and we use Alteryx to solve this problem. I heard this story better than a half a dozen times. I was finally like, okay, okay, I, I, I get the hint. I'll go on the blind date. And so I went over, just like I was advocating to you, to go down to the data village and talk to the people. And within 10 minutes of talking to them, I was like, oh my God, where have you been my entire life? Excel, thank you very much. And I moved on. So that's my blind date story, that's how we got it. But it was two years ago, we didn't have Tableau or Alteryx. So keep that in mind as you think about what, what you're gonna hear some of this stuff. 
Next couple of slides are what I term my elevator speech. I ran around the general because everybody's like, Alteryx Tableau, what, who, uh, what's that? I ran around the company. I must have written this, the, this diagram and the next two 150 times, no kidding. Backs of napkins, paper, whiteboards, my hand. I, like This was my explanation. So in the old world, you got the data, whether it's DB2 or SQL or spreadsheets, CSVs, you got some outside report that you log into a website and you download it. Didn't matter. You take it, you scoop it, you throw it over the fence, you mash it up in Excel, you add some formulas, you add some rows, you filter this, you filter that, maybe you spin it into a pivot table, and voila, you got a cross tab. Woohoo! <laughs> and then you might, you might turn it into a pivot chart. And then we discovered Alteryx. And this is how I explained it, right here. It does it all. All that stuff that you've been doing with all of those different sources, one tool, simple tool. Anybody can use it. And people got this. And then because they, they're like, well, what about that Tableau thing? Isn't that there too? Well, yep. And don't get picky on my diagram. This worked for me explaining it to people. So I <laughs> built it the same way. Because I know some of you are going to go, I can go directly to data. Yes. But this is how I explained it to people, and they understood it. And that's a big thing, right? When you are trying to create change in your organization, you've got to get people to understand where this all fits together and why I should do this. And if you really wanted to know all about change management, I, you can go to the Alteryx website, I think, and you can, uh, you can see my, because I presented at the Alteryx and talked about change management and getting people to adopt new technology. But those three slides are my two-minute elevator. Feel free, use them. I found them extremely helpful in explaining to people where this all fits together. At my presentation in June, I talked about the three E's, excellence, efficiency, and enablement. And those are really the keys about what success we had with Alteryx because it improved our accuracy, our queries, quality, the transparency, the standardization, standardization of tools. It was incredibly helpful. Efficiency. We saved, by automating things, we saved over 1,200, I can document, and there's more that I can't, 1,200 hours a month, a month, eliminated in repeated processes that run this query, put it in a spreadsheet, stick it over here. We put apps out on the server. We created end-to-end, touch-free automation because we've got Alteryx piping out originally to TDEs, now to Hypers, from data source to end source, touch-free. That freed up my team. That made it so that my team didn't have to work on weekends. When we closed a month on a weekend, didn't have to. Didn't have to worry about it. So these are all the benefits that came from it. And then last, and certainly not least, was enablement, which allowed, and I'm about to get to the meat of it, <coughs> which allowed people in the organization to get a hold of the data and do it themselves. It took the analysts and our data science team, our data science team is using Promote, and they're leveraging it. Our analysts are all using Alteryx and Tableau, they're leveraging it, and you've got people who didn't touch either one of those tools who are now able to see and use data analytics tools. With that, we're gonna talk about the prior state, the business case, the reason you're here. How did we get an actual rolling forecast? This was the old world. We only had four channels. We only had 18 states. It's kind of like me growing up in Michigan. I had ABC, NBC, and CBS. And I was lucky enough that I was close to Windsor so I could get Channel 9 over in Windsor, Canada. But small. Didn't need to worry about it. That's, you know, we could do things more manual at that point. Everything was completely Excel spreadsheet. Um, pers I mean, like emails going back and forth, but this spreadsheet linked to that spreadsheet linked to that one. Sometimes you wouldn't have access to the, the drive that the information really was in. Uh, trying to re reverse engineer it to understand what to do and where we need to go. Couldn't figure it out. Uh, it, w it was a complete mess. Da, 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 da. You know, father time arrives every year. Oh my God. And I know, I know some of you are gonna have this exact expression that I'm about to do. All right, 
it's planning time, forget about it. No, I can't do that. I can't do that this month, we've got planning. No, I can't do that next month either. We've got planning for the next two months. And you dread it. It's this big thing that hangs over your head every year and it's, just, oh goodness, here's planning. And to create all those spreadsheets, it was extremely manual. We had someone in this department creating this information, someone in that, that department creating that information when it's all gathered. It took, a, I think it took about a day to put it or link it wherever it needed to go so it could actually have the annual forecast that we do, did once a year. And a lot of these legacy items lead into the business problems that we were trying to solve. First is that huge effort that I was talking about. Oh, okay, we got it up the hill, we got it up the hill, and take off and hold on for dear life and hope that you did it right because, yeah, maybe it worked, maybe it didn't. But hanging on for dear life, right? Ownership could be uh, hard to come by sometimes, whether product owned it or finance owned it, marketing wanted to have their input, and there really was some ambiguity with who, who really owns it, who really has the final say. I didn't hear anybody chuckle. That's not funny. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes, my, my wife would call that Mark humor. She'd yeah, just shake her head. Ultimately, we wanted to simplify. I mean, that was really the, the foundation of a lot of it. We wanted to make the work easier. We wanted to make everybody's life easier. We wanted to simplify what was going on. We really wanted to capture the decisions being made that will impact the future. So we wanted to, our product managers, you're probably gonna hear us call them like PMs, uh, when we just shorthand it. But uh, we want to know what they're going to make a change to that will affect the outcome in the future that we can't build a model for, um, no matter how good the model is. Yeah, and I think you tried it in previous. Last year we tried to get their inputs. And with getting their inputs, it was all, like, like I said, completely uh, email them this, They'll email it back, and somehow they didn't really line up with the, the growth goals that we had as an enterprise and as a company uh, that we really wanted to target anyway. So we actually scrapped their information and just went back to what we were doing before with the attempt last year before we really integrated Alteryx and Tableau. Yeah, so it was really important to try and get information from, and we call them PMs, they're product managers, not PMPs, but the product managers all own a state, so they know specific details. We know at a high level what's going on, but they're gonna have specific information. Are we gonna take rate? Are we going to create a promotion? Are we gonna pull back in this state? Are there regulations coming online that you're not going to see? We wanted to maximize the transparency in the whole process. We wanted people to be able to understand what corporate central finance was doing and what product managers were doing and facilitate that communication and make it very transparent for all to understand. We really wanted to capture the source close, uh, with the data closer to the source than having to rely on other people in other departments providing that for us and not being able, the transparency thing, not being able to see how they really got their results. Yeah, and you can start to see how a lot of these interplay with each other, right? Because the spreadsheets is like spreadsheet to spreadsheet to spreadsheet and down here. Well, you know what? Why do we have all that inter intermittent? intermediary stuff. Let's go get the data ourselves. And then, of course, the notorious hurry up and wait. Wait, wait, wait for the spreadsheet. Wait for this, wait for that. Okay, everybody's got to go like crazy, and then we sit. I, I, I'm hoping some of this is familiar and resonating, and does this sound, does this process sound like anybody else's forecasting process that they're dealing with? Really? Really? Okay, I would have thought a lot more people, but you guys must have a really slick process. That's impressive. So now we get to our solution and, and how we got here. And for those in the crowd from Big Ten Country, the team, the team, the team. <laughs> for those on the inside, you get it. But this is important. Because what we did was we put together, we had a forecast team, and it was really critical. It was myself, I'm the director of data services, with Scott, the assistant controller. We had the AVP of finance, we had the AVP of product, and between the four of us, 
We had those three things down at the bottom. We had the vision, the technical, and the empowered. Together, we would meet weekly and talk about the vision of where we wanted this thing to go, how we wanted it to look, and we had the foresight to understand where we wanted to take it. Amongst the four of us, we had the technical power, and you're going to see the flow here in just a second, but Scott put the Alteryx flow together and had all the expertise to build what is truly impressive. I put together the majority of the tableau. We also had input from both the VP of finance and the VP of product who had expertise in their area to understand what needed to be done. And then lastly, and certainly not least, we were empowered to do it. Between the four of us, we didn't need to run this up to somebody else to say, hey, we've got this idea, we think it'll work. VP of finance was the one who was doing the planning. So he was like, yeah, I like it. We had the tools in place. The, the AVP of products could get his product managers on board. So between the, the four of us, the team, I can't emphasize how important it was to have the right people. And it wasn't so expanded that we spent weeks and months haggling over details. We went, we did, we were empowered, it worked. And what you're gonna see here is the solution that we came up with, the process. As a brief overview, we're gathering the information in AlterX and the step. We're outputting it, the information output into Excel. Then we're recapturing all that data so we can publish it to Tableau. Now and we're gonna cover, this chart is kind of the brief flyby, but now we're gonna go into some of the details on each of those each of those pieces. And first, I do have to state this, that I do not code, I alter X. Uh, so I just, like I said, my background is accounting, I'm debits and credits, journal entries, all that. So when I got pulled into this, it was uh, just because I had some information on where the, where the data was that they were looking for. But this is really the first step that's gathering the information. It's not just gathering the information from all the sources, but it's, uh, it's prepping, it's uh, filtering, it's sorting, it's, uh, creating run rates for the averages, it's creating retention ratios, cancellation ratios, all of that. And you might think this is kind of a big workflow, and it does take about 15 minutes to run, but that's on business day one, and we run it once a month, and instead of having to wait two or three weeks for all these information from these other departments to, that, to provide spreadsheets that we have to link to, uh, this is, and it's completely, this doesn't change. The, so I update one, one field, the date, and, and then it goes, it's ready to go. Yeah, can't emphasize enough. I, I, I affectionately call this thing the circuit board. But this is the first part of that A. This captures it. And that only runs, that only needs to run once a month to go capture all of the actuals from the prior month. It runs over two dozen sources right now and more. Yeah, so you might look up there and go, ah, yeah, a couple of dozen donuts, they all look the same. Well, kind of, sort of. Here's the deal, and that is we capture it from literally DB2, SQL, spreadsheets, CSVs, and you know what, you can, if you're in your organization, if you've got JSON or Hadoop or whatever, Alteryx treats them all the same. That's the thing about it. It's, it's not that the data sources are all the same, but Alteryx handles them just as easily as if they were all the same. Then in that step, uh, there's only one output that sends all this information out to 51 different spreadsheets because we have all the state spreadsheets created, even if we're not writing them. Uh, and so it's calculating, uh, all this information is creating 408 tabs of information for the PMs to look at and make their decisions. What you're looking at here is, yes, we actually use Excel as well as a piece of this. All of that information that he just talked about populates that whole top section where we say national assumptions. Those are gathering from those over two dozen sources, I think it's 26 or 28 right now, and more adding on. And then the PMs. This is where we're capturing the, the PMs' decisions on a percentage basis. Uh, so they can tell us if they're going to increase rate or uh, anything's gonna happen in the future that we're, we can't model. Um, <coughs> This is where we're getting their inputs, and then the third section is the one calculating all of their, uh, what their decisions, how it impacts the, the, the bottom lines that we really want to see as far as the written premium. 
and deja vu. All tricks. Back to the rescue. It goes out to those 51 spreadsheets and captures data from all of those different tabs. We've got over 1,100 named ranges on those spreadsheets. We've got one for each state plus DC. It takes and captures all of the changes that the product managers have input. It captures all of the results. And then it takes and hold on to your hats. Kicks them out into a hyper file. We've got 1.5 million records. We're breaking it down by state, by channel, by month. We've got a couple of years history behind us. We've got out to 2023 in front of us. And all of that goes out in 1.5 million records on each iteration of our forecast. When we did that the first time, it was kind of interesting because this next slide I'm gonna to go to uh, was really one of the first ones that I put together. Actually, before we go on, there, oh, there was yep. on that second one, the second workflow that we have in Alterx, we actually have it on the server. So it is, when it's capturing all those 1,100 plus named ranges, it's capturing it, that workflow runs in like three minutes, but it's capturing it every 15 minutes. So when the PMs make their adjustments, and they save their workbook, whenever they save it, where, whether they're in it or not, we can go into the data, extract their results, and then publish it to Tableau near real, near real time. Yeah, that's a, that's a really important point. Thanks for bringing me back. Um, this only takes, like he said, this only takes three minutes to sweep through and capture all those results. So we are able to provide to management in real time if somebody makes a change to a state. Senior leadership can see this. Our, VP is living entirely out of our Tableau files this year. Entirely out of our forecast file, and I'm gonna go through some of our Tableau stuff in a minute. He's not going back, and, and certainly the other members of the team aren't gonna go back through 51 states. This provides it all in one short, concise place. What I'd like to take you through now, actually, is a brief review of what we just talked about. So we're capturing from over 24 sources currently, or actually probably more. Alteryx then takes and publishes that out to 51 spreadsheets. They populate eight tabs, one for each channel, plus a summary. We're actually capturing the PM's decisions uh, for, the future, for impacting the future. Alteryx then captures all of that, those updates. And lastly, publish Hyper. Out to Hyper. Really important, and I can't emphasize this enough, it's really, the Hyper thing is cool because what we've got with that is currently, I think we've got six iterations of the forecast now in our, in our model. And all of the charts that I'm about to run through update in a blink. There's no delay, there's no lag, there's no, hey, I'm executing the query and I'm waiting for the results, 30 seconds, okay. Okay, I wanna change state. Okay, I wanna change which product manager. None of that. Updates in a blink. And I wish almost that I could, to, could fire this up, but as you'll see, we kinda sanitize some of our charts. <laughs> and most people probably would think there's a flaw in this. Uh, <laughs> This is the first one that I think Mark really created for visual effect. I, uh, I really enjoyed it because it showed me that we, this is one of the first ones that we created after our first iterations and test, but it showed me that we had, a, we had an issue with our modeling. Uh, so looking at a, a, just a table, we weren't able to see that, that the numbers really had any kind of big flaw in them. But then giving us the visuals to see, hey, we're, we're peaking at certain points, and then of course the, uh, the thin lines that are the forecast they're not changing, which is not right. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting because this was almost, this, this was, before we got fancy, this was the first one, and it, I, I, I couldn't wait till the next day to tell. It's like, oh, we've got a problem. And then we went through this and we found instance after instance where being able to visualize it, which try and visualize 1.5 million records in Excel. Okay, nine million? 
you kind of get the point. The level of detail that we can get into on these things, and not the Tableau LOD, but just the level of detail that we can examine and drill into is incredible. This was one of the next charts. And this is, some of these charts are not necessarily, and I, I said this to start off with, we're not talking about a, a wow moment with Tableau visualizations. I'm not a Zen master, I'm not gonna pretend to be. But what it did provide was a rolling 1Q, 2Q, 3Q, 4Q for a couple of years. And as you can see off to the side, you got a couple of filters that you can take and you can change around the forecast stamp so you can look at, hey, I looked at this this month. What did this look like last month? What did it look like the month before? You can decide when you want. You can nail it down to a specific state, specific channel. You can identify a product manager if you want, and what it'll have is all of their information aggregated. This is very similar to the Excel spreadsheet, except that you're looking at Tableau. If you wanted to drill down into a certain state, a certain channel, any uh, certain owner of the, uh, that state, we, we have the filters for this built, but this really shows the national assumptions, the change that they've made, and then the ultimate adjusted forecast. And then this is just a, a simple dashboard heat map up on top. Oh, let's not... Uh... Up there, we've got actuals, and you can see them. Down here, it's a percentage change month to month to month to month. And then again, you can see the different filtering opportunities. And then this one, this is one of the, the ones that, we, that I built after we had a couple of versions of the forecast in place, where we're able to see these two lines. You can select which two forecasts you want or three, or four, they're bar in bar. You can tell it what year you want to look at, which measure. We have about 15 or 20 different measures that go into this. I, I, I think I may have missed that point along the way. This isn't just one thing that we're forecasting. We've got 20 different measures. Everything from counts on new, renewed, uh, cancels, continuing, all the premiums for them, all the quotes, all the everything. We've got 20 different things. That's why there are so many. It's not just, hey, we're forecasting just how much money or just how many counts of this. We're predicting all of it. And although it only shows one, uh, two being compared against each other, we have more, there's that option where you can select multiple iterations where they'll just stack. Yeah. But the percentage difference will show the, between the first and last yeah. and that bottom. And this, this middle section here actually is detailing what the delta is between, if you have multiple dates selected, it gives you the delta between what was the earliest forecast and what was the latest forecast. And where that's really gonna be great is come about February, when we're looking at it and everybody goes, well, how does this compare to plan? Well, plan was back in October. You can select February and October. You get your delta, you get your table. And together, it all comes together in a nice, beautiful work of art, all the way from the data sources that you're capturing down to entering the algorithms at the national level and forecasting, telling people what's going to happen, getting it out to the PMs in an effective tool that they're very familiar with. We use Excel because, quite frankly, the PMs are used to it. They, can, they know how to open up a spreadsheet and put in some numbers, and then publishing it out. Now. I'm about to roll through a couple of things, but I want to make sure that we talk about where we're going. The next big steps are just integrating the next pieces, and ultimately getting a forecasted, uh, five-year forecasted profit and loss statement. That's yeah. our, our goal with this. So we're going to take over the world, Pinky. But we do have big plans, and it's just an iterative process. It doesn't end here. With that, I'm going to go back over the nuggets, and. The concrete nugget, don't take off quite yet. I know there's, please fill out your survey. If you didn't like what you heard today, please leave a comment. Let us know what you thought. Quickly, the nuggets, use the right tool. Feel free to use the elevator speech. It helps under people understand who aren't in it. Alteryx. Unlimited data source, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah Alteryx had unlimited data sources, sorry. No, it's all good. Hyperfiles, 
be sure you understand what version of both Tableau and Alteryx that you've got. Uh, I believe it's 11.5 where the hypers were introduced and 18.2, Seth, maybe keep me honest, 18.2 where Alteryx then created a macro to export to Tableau server with hyper files. And the seamless process that you create. Yep, and then this is the little nugget that I was talking about. Right here, the Tableau toolkit is not something that's just normally on your Alteryx designer. So go to that website and download the toolkit. Go talk to the people at the booth for Alteryx. They'll help you. If you haven't got it yet, make sure, go download your two-week copy. Now I'm gonna talk about something very specific here. Here's a hardcore nugget for you. When we first did this, that's what the server, Tableau server, icon looks like right there. There are two configuration windows, connection and output. Tip number one, your Tableau server URL goes there. Tip number two, save your connection history. Tip number three, I suggest if you've got a Tableau server that you create or have available to you, a Tableau service account or a whatever your organization is, some kind of a service account so that these can run and it's not working off of your individual personal credentials. Tip number two. Again, we're talking about this. And we're talking about the second configuration window. Name your data source. Publish to a data source and name it. Now, this second section here, notice there is no box checked. The first time you run it, you want to check that box. You'll run it it will refresh the list of projects that are on your server. You then, it will not publish. You then come back, uncheck it, and then you've got a pull down and you select which project you want to send it to. And then here you select either Hyper or TDE. I am hoping that all of you have found this useful. And at this point, we will open it up to questions. Hey, tell them, uh, can you cut on mic? The mic? Turn on the hand mic. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, OK. Um, at one point, uh, there was a slide where I thought I saw like the Excel that you published to. Yes. Um, it seemed like there was formatting in there, like colors and all that. How were you able to accomplish that, like, and not just have the raw data output? So the Excel outputs file. actually go to a data tab. The outputs go to a data tab, and, and we're using formulas to grab from that data tab. It just seems it's more efficient. Somebody else have a question? Yeah, it's Seth is going out there. Uh, I'm just asking about the performance of like 1.9 million records in hyperfile. How is the performance? I'm sorry? The performance of the, of the hyperfile. The, the performance with the hyperfile is amazing. Uh, we've got, we have, like I said, we've got six different uh, versions of our forecast already published out, which is about nine million records, and they update in a blink, seriously. We, got, we have no lag time with the hyperfiles whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so the use case that you talked through there was a small number of people with a very specific task. Are you looking to roll out Alteryx wider within the business like you might have currently with Tableau? I'm having a real hard time hearing from up here. I'm sorry. Okay. Are there other use cases in your company other than... than Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. And are you, are you looking to oh, yeah. roll out Alteryx oh, for further yeah, yeah, users? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got, we've got countless use cases. It was interesting because one of the first use cases that we actually attacked was I brought it in and as an insurance company, we deal with what are known as data calls. And those are to the Department of Insurance in every single state. And it was a massive deal. We would have two people working essentially full time for six months to try and produce these. And we came in, we actually had somebody quote automating that, and it was $1.2 million. $1.2 million to automate that. I set a team of four people in a room, and they worked from lunch till the end of the day for two months, 
With Alteryx, it automated all of our data calls completely. So now it's an app that sits out on the server. You pick which of our, because we've got different companies based legally. And so you pick which company, you pick which state, you hit it, it pops it out in exactly the format that the state wants because the states are really, really fussy about what format that they digest their information, as well as at the same time kicking out a spreadsheet that goes to our audit department for them to be able to, to validate the data. So that was another one of the big ones that we did. We did another one where they had been trying to get their arms around understanding how many agents were being paid that weren't selling things. We did that in an afternoon and saved a few hundred thousand dollars. We had another program where um, our storm reports, our storm reports weren't possible. We, as an insurance company, we get hit with cats, catastrophes. Denver, you know, hail in Denver, obviously the hurricanes are an obvious one. <clears throat> and you can imagine an insurance company gets a little crazy at that point. And everybody wants to know up to the minute, like, what's going on? How many claims have come in? How many have been processed? What are we at? How many have been paid? How many have been closed? And if you wanted the reports that they wanted, you would literally have to have a person sit there, create the report, hand it in, okay, it's time to start again. And you could have them doing one of those reports, we automated all of that. So that our storm reporting is what we call NRT, near real time, so that all of that comes out automatically. Source to end, and they know exactly how many claims are coming through. We've got Tableau publishing twice a day, kind of an executive dashboard of what the status is. I mean, those are a couple, but I could literally sit here and rattle on for a half an hour on an incredible number of use cases. We, we put together an application that we put on the server where we <clears throat> have the adjusters can pull up anytime they're interacting with a customer and they can enter their information. And what it'll do is it'll draw a, 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 a map of where that person is and we can enter them by city, by state, by exact address, it didn't matter. And it'll draw and it'll give us all of our certified repair shops within either a distance or just give me the closest 10. So like I said, I could go on with our use cases. We've got a great one with Promote. Um, yes. Yeah, so you're using Alteryx twice, one before creating Excel sheet, one after the creation of Excel sheets? That's correct. We use are you, it. I'm sorry? Yeah, so are you guys thinking of an alternative solution to stop using Excel sheets because you have to send it out instead of that, publishing it somewhere and then getting the project program managers, project product managers updating all their numbers directly somewhere else instead of Excel sheets? Uh, well, so ultimately, it, it, so it's a fair question, right? Ultimately, there has to be some kind of a mechanism for us to get feedback from the product managers. And you can look at different ways to build applications to receive the data. Alteryx is amazing, and you saw the, the flow that Scott put together to capture it and publish out all of those. That ha we have found that works incredibly efficient from the point of view of being able to get that input back from the product manager. So I, you, you'd still be looking at some kind of a tool, whether you'd be creating an app where they'd be knocking it into Alteryx directly. But Excel, they're just used to, they're familiar with, and they're actually able to make an adjustment and see it in real time, how it affects not only the current year, but all the years that follow based off that one yeah, change. They're, they're very familiar with it, and it shows them kind of their results of their input, so they can sit there and play and see that. Do about now, what Tableau is great at is taking all of those and aggregating it, and then being able to drill back in from a high level and being able to plan create your yearly forecast. Yes, gentlemen over here. Well, I think they're over here. Oh, you're next, I promise, I promise. So my question is about data governance. Yes. Um, how, how do you structure that and how do you deal with those new data sources that you build with Alteryx? Data governance, yes. Um, <laughs> that is the next, that is the next uh, holy grail. I look at kind of the forecast as the first one and governance is the second one. We're gonna be leveraging actually um, Alteryx Connect to do that and so that it's gonna go out and see the data sources and understand where they're going. Um, I am literally in the process, I've had that post if any of you are a data governance manager who needs a job, come talk to me. Um, I'm, 
<laughs> I'm not kidding. I've literally had a job posted for a data uh, manager of data governance for about a month now. Um, for some reason, product managers, uh, I keep on getting a bunch of PMPs, but that is our next major target. Now, I've got, I've got certain opinions about it. I think that um, secure, when you talk about security and data governance, you need alignment. I think it's as much or more about the understanding of what a number is as opposed to necessarily changing everybody's definition to have to be that. They might both, one group might call that productivity and one group might call something else productivity. You don't necessarily need to make those the same. You just need to make sure that people understand what do they mean when they say productivity over here? Because it's really just a word, right? So you might say financial productivity in one place and you might say exposure, I'm talking insurance, exposure productivity somewhere else. So that's a big part of how I view data governance is making sure that the communication and the understanding and the definitions are as clear as the model itself. In terms of data access, I am, and Steve, this exactly goes to the discussion and I'm, you know where I'm about to go, <laughs> which is I think the whole paradigm of you don't get to see it in, in a need to know basis, I think that paradigm needs to be flipped 180 and that you should have access to essentially all information unless there's a reason you shouldn't know it. And there are those cases, absolutely. The easy and obvious is HR, right? There's a whole bunch of personal sensitive data. Not you don't necessarily have to have data, uh, access to that data, but in that case, you really shouldn't have access to that data. So kind of my opinion real quick on governance and security. Gentlemen in the corner, I promised. All right. Uh, so my question is from the outset, um, how did you structure your organization to deliver these capabilities? Was it you know, option A, here come the consultants and you outsource the build? Or did you take this capability and had that aha moment as an organization and said, you know, Tableau plus Altrix needs to be an internal uh, core capability and, and we're going to yeah, shape so a culture around it? Great question. Please go see my video from Inspire. I'm only half joking. So internally, we, we did not. We did not like bring in a whole bunch of consultants. We did not. When I came to the conference, as I said, two years ago, I had never even heard of Alteryx. I literally was at the, the Austin conference and like, Alteryx, what's that? Um, I brought them both in and I had to go about educating everybody. That's what that Venn diagram was. Where do they fit? I created, within our organization, I created training. My team was first. I hired a guy who was an Alteryx subject matter expert, and a couple of months later, I, I hired a Tableau subject matter expert. They were the only two guys that knew Alteryx or Tableau, including myself, including myself. Two years ago, I couldn't. I'm course certified now, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, but we ran training sessions. I called them the weekly forum. And we had one for Alteryx, and we had one for Tableau. So we called it Tableau Tuesday. I know, corny. And every Thursday we had an Alteryx session and people could come in with their problems on the fly and learn Alteryx. That's where Scott started his journey. A year, I mean, we didn't have it 18 months ago. I'd say you didn't jump in until three or four, six months after we had it. So, it, you know, we're talking about a year and look what he's been able to do. And I didn't start on that project until... Uh, March or April when it was in spare time kind of. And, yeah, and he's doing this on top of his real job. So one of the things that we found with running those training was there was a huge amount of value in cross-pollinization, if you will, and getting people, I, it, we would have 14, 15 people in the room and they'd be from claims and underwriting and finance and uh, product and product dev and digital marketing and what you found was all of this exchange of ideas and people building flows. So we created internally our environment, our culture there. Alteryx and Tableau are literally completely embedded in the culture now. If you walked into that company and tried to take Alteryx out of their hands, forget it. Wouldn't happen. Tableau, same thing. People have, it has become so embedded, people just, they, they, they're used to it. So we've created our own culture and that, and literally going back to, this is what I talked about in June, I literally ran around the company being a cheerleader. I was an unabashed evangelist and said, use this, use this, this is great. This will solve your problem. And I, I wanna touch on that for a moment because 
If you go to some manager, director, whomever, supervisor, and you go, well, you know, I've got this tool and I think it might solve your problem and, you know, it's kind of cool. I think it, it, it'll work. Uh, yeah, that sounds convincing. So what is that supervisor, manager, or director, whoever going to think if you're sitting there going, well, I think it might. And they're going to look at you, well, if you're the one who brought it in here and you're not sure, I'm, I'm, you know, give it to Mikey. Mikey will eat it and don't give it to me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm dating myself. I get it. Uh, but seriously, you build the culture with the training. You start with your team, and then you expand from there. Anybody have one final question? Yeah. She's, yeah. Oh, there's, you're in shadows up there, Raman. Yeah. Uh, well, shout out to the insurance industry. I'm from Nationwide, so um, I guess I can relate with most of your products. Uh, so the one thing, that, one question that I really have is really about uh, getting buy-in. Uh, we have so many tools uh, across different analytic organizations. Um, we use SPSS Modeler. Um, of course, uh, other people use uh, regular dev uh, software like uh, Python and, and R. How were you able to integrate the tool, uh, Altrix, and convince other people, other parts of the organization uh, the validity of, of Altrix, uh, because we use Altrix, but it's in a contained environment, um, just because we have a business case. But convincing the rest of the organization, that's really my question. Yeah, we, it, it really comes back to um, what I was talking about, and that is an underlying cultural change and understanding how to make that change happen in your organization. And, and a, couple of, a couple of keys that I would give you, one of them being identify both the people who are your evangelists and those people who are going to support you, as well as those detractors. And quite frankly, avoid the detractors. Go around them. Don't worry about them. Deal with them later. Get your evangelists on board. There are going to be people who have different reasons for wanting to do it. Maybe it'll solve some pr business problem they've got. Maybe they're going to look at it and go, wow, that's a cool tool. I would, I just, I like it, I'm a geek, I want to do this. Hey, I'm a nerd too, by the way. Uh, maybe they're looking at it opportunistically and they're saying, hey, you know what, maybe, maybe I've got promotion opportunities or business opportunities if I learn this tool. So find those people who are gonna support it and get behind it. And get them, I, when I first went out, I found people, like Scott is a perfect example, right? I was whispering in his ear going, hey Scott, you should really you know, get on board with this thing. Uh, and I did that all over the organization. And I got people, and they used it, and they had wins, and they had success, and then they became evangelists because automating the forecast. You want to know what? We got the buy-in from the senior leadership team with that forecast model. And it might have started with uh, uh, something that I, I was working on before that that really led me into that was the premium summary. It's because I created that, and they saw the, the benefits of that, and that just that spark kind of can light a fire. And don't be afraid to go after, so there's, there's big projects and there's small projects, right? You can get little wins, and that's great. But, you know, don't be afraid to go after something big. Look at it and go, you know what? I'm putting a stake in the ground. I'm going after it. I'm doing it. I mean, I've, I'll tell you true. When I first had these guys come into uh, the general and I told them that I was doing the data call, I literally looked at them and said, this better work or I'm going to be out the door. <laughs> So I laid it on the line, I did. I put it out there and said, hey, we're gonna make this happen, and we did, and we had success with that, and we had success in finance, and then we had success with automating all of our claim stuff. All of a sudden, the claims organization is getting, forget about the 1,200 hours, think about this from an efficiency point of view. They're walking in in the morning where it used to be two or three hours, so 10, 11 o'clock before the last of the reports were done, and if you're on the East Coast, you're talking about noon. They walk in the door now, all that stuff is done. They walk in and they've got all of their reports done. I remember a year ago, August, final point, Seth. A year ago, August, I said, well, it's the first day of the month, you guys are probably busy, and my team laughed at me. I'm like, what's so funny? I'm like, it's done. It was nine o'clock the first day of the month and all the reporting was done. So get those wins. Don't be afraid to go after the big ones. Go after the small ones, those are great. Get your evangelist. All that will help you create the culture and get the buy-in. 
So let's thank Mark and Scott for sharing. Thank you guys for staying. Have a great show, okay? See you guys throughout the week. Thank you.